At the top of his game, John Kerwin was one of the most formidable rugby players in the world. Fast, strong and powerful, JK was an unstoppable try-scoring machine. John Kerwin. As fast as he was, though, JK's mental health eventually caught up with him. You know, I wanted to jump out of a window one night. Um, I started having anxiety attacks. I didn't know what they were. You know, my reference to mental health was one flew over the cuckoo's nest. In 2010, JK decided to change all that. He released a book revealing his struggle with anxiety and depression. Over a decade ago, All Blacks Don't Cry became a bestseller. Since then, the world has seen new problems, new challenges. So Sir John decided to update and republish the book. New advice to help those going through their own battle with mental health in 2023. Please welcome Sir John Kerwin. Hello, team. You know, uh, I'm going to ask you a question straight away, Jeremy, but that doesn't happen that often. It doesn't? I just, uh, just wanted to know how everyone is. How everyone is, you know, because I've been thinking about you guys from a mental health point of view. It's been a really difficult time. This will be an emotional week, so, you know, I hope you're um, OK and enjoying it. I feel better for hearing that. Yeah, Thank you, John. thanks, JK. We are here to talk about your book, though, and when it first came out, we actually really struggled to talk about mental health, but we have made some progress there, right? Yeah, I'm really proud. You know, I'm really proud of how New Zealand's come, especially around the awareness space. So for me to put it all out in a book just gave people the opportunity just to dig a bit deeper and understand it a bit more. The nice thing for me is people read the book and think that they've written it, which means that I'm identifying with them. Hey, you also recorded the audio book for it. Was it difficult reading out loud and going through those experiences again? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, I did a speech yesterday in Christchurch and um, I looked left because um, when I wanted to jump out of a window one night um, on an all black tour, I, uh, you know, I go through that emotion and, and reading the book out loud was really hard. I had to stop on occasions because you're digging back into a place that's, uh, that's, that's hard to go to. And sometimes I get caught in my throat. Sometimes I feel like I want to cry. Um, but I keep trying to come back to say, you know, it's hope, I got through it, I'm great now, I'm, you know, I'm working in the preventative mental health space now. I want people to, to know that if you look after yourself every day mentally, you know, you can go from surviving to thriving. Uh, you were going through some pretty tough times when you were playing really, really well. You're top of your game as a sports person. Um, was that part of the reason why you're suffering anxiety or, or let me put it another way if you weren't swanning around on the wing and you're in an office somewhere do you think you still would have had the same issues yeah i do actually mark and you know i mean i think for me i reckon i played for about three or four years at 60 percent but i was really lucky that i had a gift i had a gift from mum and dad or god or allah or whoever you want to believe in i had that gift that helped me um, survive while still function functioning at 60%, right? Uh, when I was unwell, I was overthinking stuff and I was having anxiety attacks on the field, and so I wasn't playing it on my best. The, the other thing, and the reason why your question's so interesting is, um, I didn't know why it was happening to me. Why would it happen to me, you know? But it can happen to anyone. You know, mental health is not prejudice. You can be in the office worker, you can be a TV on TV in the public eye, an all-black, a cricketer, um, and you can suffer. So I, I think it's not prejudice, and we just need to take it as it is. Well, it's our final week, John. You asked how you could cheer us up. Maybe for me, would you mind just indulging me and talking me through that big try against Italy in the opening game of the 1987 Rugby World Cup? It was <laughs> the greatest moment of my childhood. Um, the interesting thing that I don't tell a lot of people is I held my breath, which is pretty stupid. So when I scored the try, I was really dizzy. So I got up and I was all dizzy. But uh, I love that. Yeah, I don't watch that try much. You, sir, an absolute legend. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. My pleasure. Enjoy. Oh, what a great guy. Um, and a bit of an insight for him about what it was like to be an All Black with mental health issues. I used to play for the Black Caps, Mark. Um, did you have those conversations together in the dressing room? How's your mental health? If someone was suffering, did they... Was it something they talked about in front of other people? No, you know, not probably back at the time that I, I was playing. It's 20 years ago, right? It is. A, yeah, you don't have to bring that up. <laughs> <laughs> and, 
Yeah, I, like, it was an attitude of, like, well, he, he just has to harden up. It's a tough game. So mm. got knocks. Mm. But you think, that at, especially at, those, at the top levels of sport, it, it, they talk about it being about the top two inches if you want to perform. So if you want your teammates to perform, you need to understand what's going through their top two inches. And if it's not quite right, you need to be able to help them. But you can't do that until you understand the issues. Yeah. It's different from being sad because you're going through a, a run of poor form. It's different from being nervous. Anxiety is not nervous. It's, it's, it's very different from just you've been having a bad day, you know. So until there is that true level of awareness, yeah. then how can you really help people? I think John Kerr was a huge part of that awareness here in New Zealand. And that's pretty brave, right? National treasure. To be, National talk treasure. To be talking about that yeah. stuff when nobody else was talking about it. And actually has made a huge difference in the country, I reckon. Yeah, different now. I bang on about my mental health and people are like, oh, she's talking about it again. <laughs> she's always talking about it. But that's thanks to people like John Kerwin. <laughs> the revised version of All Blacks Don't Cry is out now. And if that story did bring up any issues for you, you can always free text or call 1737.